Hey traders, David Frost, my strategic forecast. You're here for another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis. This is a weekend update for the week ending July 19, 2019. We are looking at a daily chart of the SPY or Spider, which is the proxy for the S&P 500. And it was a pretty interesting day. You can see the candle on the screen. Today's candle certainly can be classified in the fugly category. Gap and crap. Reversal candle, certainly on an increase in volume. The volume goes all the way up to the average 90-day volume. That stands for something. These are the things that stand out at me on the screen. Yesterday, we talked about that 240-minute chart, and that had a really, really nice rally off that low point made from filling the gap all the way into this morning's gap and crap. So this, to me, at least on the face of it, looks like a failure. It's not over yet. The fat lady has not sung. But what happened is going into the weekend, they left everybody hanging. Is it really going to happen this time? Or is it just the trick, trap, fool, and frustrate crew playing some more games? Remember, start with the big picture. In the big picture, the market still, from a daily chart perspective, is in an uptrend. We're above all the moving averages. We came up short of the 20 yesterday. Remember, we talked about that. Here comes the 20 again. Are they going to hit the 20 and go? Remember, we talked about that in Thursday night's video. We put it in the camp with the 80-20 rule. 80% 80 of the time, that's not going to happen. They're not going to come back, hit the 20, and then continue on a rocket ride higher. Under normal market conditions, 80% of the time, you're either going to get a hit or a spike through with a 20-period moving average, then the market takes off, or it misses it, that's bullish, and the market takes off. Other than that, I'm not really in for... This is common, normal market behavior. It's not. So this one goes into the 20% category. We'll see how they open them up Monday. If they open them up up, meaning a gap higher on Sunday, a gap higher on Monday, that's one thing. Then the uptrend is still intact. We're above all the moving averages, and it's party on. On the other side, same thing applies that we talked about all week long. Getting below the 20 is not good. Closing below this reversal day, I think is it. I don't think they can afford to close below the low of the ninth. That low is 295.48. I think closing below that low is extremely bearish. Obviously, they'll want to run for this gap. There's another one right down below, but that's bearish. There will be negative stuff going on. That's not good for the market. That's a lot of points. That could accelerate to the downside in a hurry. And once again, this is how we take the market one step at a time, one day at a time, one support or resistance price at a time. We still have kind of a potpourri of news items going on out there. For those of you news watchers, we have a situation where apparently we shot down an Iranian drone where there was a rumor we shot down an Iranian drone. I don't think anybody in the market really cares one way or the other about a drone or no drone. If the market was up and a drone got shot down, nobody would say a word, nobody would care, would never even make the headline. How about the oil tanker story? Apparently, Iran swiped an oil tanker. So there's certainly enough excuses going on where if they wanted to send the market down, the media would certainly have a laundry list of places to place blame. By the way, did anybody notice where we closed the day? The official day closed, 297.17. Any accident or coincidence that it's two pennies below 297.19, right inside that gap, we talk about the gaps all the time. I don't like to see, personally, this is me, I don't like to see whatever chart we're looking at. If I'm looking at a five-minute chart and it's filling a five-minute gap, fine. If we're looking at an hourly chart and we're filling an hourly gap, same thing. Daily chart, regardless, I don't like to see that candle closing inside the gap, underneath the official fill of the gap. To me, that's generally a bearish sign, not a bullish sign in the case where a gap is being filled below, from above to below. It's not a hard and fast rule. You're not going to find that in any book anywhere. Any technical analysts on TV aren't going to talk about that. It's my own personal preference. I've just found over time, staying away from those situations where the whatever time frame we're looking at 
where the candle closes inside the gap, it tends to be negative more than it reverses back up. So I don't want to have anything to do with it. We'll see what happens with this one. Keeping with the big picture before we move on, remember, there's a lot of stuff going on down here. You do have the 20 period moving average. You also have another high or a former high right here. It's one of the reasons we have this 296.33. The market thought that was important and it traded away from it. It got there, was rejected, recocked the gun and went back up. The market was telling us that that price level is important. We kind of bantered back and forth in here around that price level for a while. So we're pretty comfortable with the fact that under normal garden variety market conditions, that price level would be important. But here's the deal. We came close yesterday, meaning on Thursday. Now, as of Friday's close, headed back down in that direction. What we don't want is sloppy seconds. Think about it. On Thursday, if the market came down to that secondary level, if it actually got to the 20 period moving average, you would have had the same reaction that we had through Friday morning. The question is, are you gonna bank on that the second go around? Do you take another bite at the apple? Certainly have all weekend to think about that one. Let's shuffle the deck a little bit, go down to a five minute chart, I wanna point something out. Now this one isn't really going to make you any money, but this one will save you money. Look what happened at the end of the day. Now we're gonna look at a couple of different charts and we're gonna see similar stuff. What I'm showing you here on the five minute chart is this big long tail candle. What this does is, it gets traders on board. It gets traders thinking that was the low, they're gonna rip them up into the close. The problem is, those traders that get sucked into that trade, they don't realize that trade came out of shenanigan central. I know this for two reasons, really three reasons. Reason number one, which I'm gonna show you in a moment, is it shows up on many different charts. It's not an accident, it's not a coincidence. Why do I mention that? Because not everybody's looking at the same chart. Some traders are looking at a five minute, some traders are looking at a three minute, some are at a 10 minute, 15, all different kinds of charts. How about a seven minute chart? Who even knew there was a seven minute chart? I always seem to come up with something that leaves you scratching your head. Same tail candle. How about the 10 minute chart watchers? Similar tail candle. You're a 15 minute chart person? We've got a tail candle for you. It gets traders buying the market into the end of the day only to find out they're gonna hit them into the close. Now you don't know they're gonna hit them into the close. Sometimes they do rip them up 10, 12 points in the last few minutes of the day. We've seen that over and over. Here's the point. You don't know, it's impossible to trade. The only time you make money trying these trades is by being right as a result of guessing correctly. My point here is, in Shenanigans Central, this is not a tradable environment in the last 30 minutes of the day, for example. It's really much better as a spectator sport. So we had the gap in crap. Let's extend that a little bit. What else did we have today? Microsoft. Microsoft reported earnings after the close Thursday. Everybody was excited. Everybody was praising Microsoft, only to find out they were in store for a gap in crap. That's not good news for Microsoft. That's not good news for the market in the short term or longer. It's still in an uptrend, but when you have a day where the stock gaps up after earnings, everybody gets excited, we're making new highs, we crap out and finish on the lows of the day 80% of the time, that's not good news. Remember Netflix? Got killed on Thursday, got hit again pretty hard on Friday. Take notice of this. 30 million shares on Thursday, 16 million shares on Friday against an average 90 day volume of 6 million shares. When that happens going from basically an uptrend, now at least on the daily chart, way below those moving averages, that 30 million shares yesterday is not bottoming volume, that's institutional distribution volume. Might as well take a look at Apple while we're here. Nothing wrong with Apple. It was an ugly candle on the chart, down three bucks, one and a half percent. It's a down day, but we're still above all the moving averages, still in an uptrend. Technically speaking, there's nothing wrong with Apple on the chart. Same deal for Amazon. Today may have been, 
or could have been just a retracement. It could have been a retracement of yesterday's candle. Although, again, I don't love it when it closes down near the lows of the day, even on a retracement. I'd rather get the retracement and trade in the northern direction pretty quickly away from that area. That's a crisp move. That's a garden variety retracement. Those are the ones that you want to see. Those are the ones that work 80% of the time. These, not so much. Stopping by Camp IWM, what do we have? What did we say yesterday? We said on Thursday the IWM was teetering. That's the exact term. That's the exact word. Teetering. It's not a spelling bee, so I'm not going to spell it, but I like the word. You see what's going on. We talk about this one every single day. Riding the 100 period moving average, bull flag pattern, until and unless it breaks down and releases the energy in the other direction. The IWM is teetering. Remember what we talked about the last couple of trading sessions. Let's move the chart over and have that discussion again. The gap that was not filled is 153.63. We came within 10 cents on Wednesday. We came within 10 cents on Thursday, finishing on the lows on Friday. Do you want to pick the market up at that gap right now? Or is the IWM going to trade through that gap after missing twice and coming a third time? It's fine if I'm wrong, but I'm not a buyer, not necessarily of the IWM. I'm not a buyer of any chart set up like this where they're coming into the gap after missing by pennies for a third try. That's not for me. That's not a trade setup I'm interested in. From where I sit, the IWM is weak. It wasn't necessarily leading today in terms of a leading indicator. It is my favorite. But it wasn't leading, it was down about on par with the SPY. But it's teetering. And if it's going to crack, it's not cracking alone. It's going to pull everything else along with it. That's the reason it's my favorite market leading indicator. How about the VIX? Was that a rope-a-dope on the VIX? We talked about it last night. We talked about the VIX coming down. We talked about the bearish pattern. We talked about the fact that it looked like a bear flag pattern. We manipulated a little bit. However... Now we finished on the high in concert with the market, the stock market finishing on the lows. It really becomes very interesting when you look at all these different charts independent of one another and then you take each piece of the puzzle and you put it on the table and you start to move them around. You start to see a picture emerge. Sometimes it's the same picture it was yesterday. Sometimes it's a completely different picture than it was yesterday. That's the fascinating and intriguing thing about the markets. And as traders and investors, we need to learn to put our opinions and our biases in our back pocket. In fact, don't even bring them with you. The only thing they are, are a hindrance to success. Take the market and every chart at face value every day and if you understand the foundation of how the market works and you continue watching these videos every single night you're gonna be just fine and herein lies a good reason why we look at each and every market independent of one another today the transports our second favorite market leading indicator our number one canary in the coal mine finished the day up more than one half of one percent interestingly enough they did make a run for that big breakdown candle high so just in two trading sessions it's been quite the recovery or at least the attempted recovery in the transports on its face we still have conflicting data in the transports we have that huge down day from wednesday at the same time we're still above all the moving averages and technically speaking the market still is in a short-term uptrend and then we can't lose sight of the channel and sometimes a lot of times these channels are essentially bear wedge patterns that end up like this so either way bull case bear case not clear at all from a short-term perspective long-term perspective from the weekly chart perspective we were concerned with a couple of different areas this big breakdown candle here if we were going to run up and close above there we tried it here and failed market comes back down were they making another run for it 
We had a pretty good spike earlier in the week. Where did they find resistance? At the top or near the top of this last breakdown candle when the market broke down, which was on the 10th of May. This is a sloppy chart any way you want to look at it. We're above all the moving averages on the weekly chart. We have lower highs and higher lows. It is sloppy. This chart is like trying to eat a Hershey bar in the heat of the summer outside. You better be quick. By the way, talking about weekly chart, what about the weekly chart of the SPY? Where are we? We are far extended from home base. That is absolutely without a shadow of a doubt what the first thing is that jumps off the page when you bring up this chart, at least for me. Bull case, we're above all the moving averages. Everything's in an uptrend. Party on, there's nothing wrong with the market. We're at new highs. Today was a down day. This was a down week. That's it, nothing more, nothing less. Bear case, market is far extended away from home base. We're in the redonkulous. Good news is bad news, bad news is good news. The Fed's always going to come to the rescue. And also inside the bear case lies all that bad information out there, all that geopolitical stuff, the Iran stuff, the China trade deal, the tariffs, Trump tweets, you name it, throw everything in the bucket, mix it all around, and you have a bear case. For me, until and unless we start closing daily, first of all, below last week's low, nothing doing. That's how you take the market one step at a time. Whereas last week's low, let me move the chart over because I just want to point something out so we look at it from different perspectives. 295.48. Where does that come from? It's the same candle we've been talking about. 295.48. The reversal from the 9th of July. For me, that's make it or break it. That's the bear case. Let's jump around some more. How about the cues? What's going on here? Same fugly reversal candle. Above all the moving averages, technically, still nothing wrong with the market, but all corrections, or at least the majority of corrections, start at some point from somewhere with some kind of reversal. We'll see. We know what's teetering and what's not. How about the XLF? Anything going on here? Nothing really new. Down 19 cents, 0.68%. Can't really make a federal case out of that. We're above all the moving averages. We have nothing really new to report in the XLF. We know the important number. It's down below. If the market's going to come down, obviously the XLF will go down along with it. And if the market remains bullish, the XLF is going to be headed again in the northern direction. Here's another puzzle piece. This is certainly of note. The SMH. So this is a good proxy for the tech sector. We talk about this one all the time. And here's the deal. It was flat. There's nothing wrong with this market. It's in an uptrend. It's a little bit extended from home base, but still. Why wasn't it down with other stuff? The transports and the SMH. Interesting. Of note, puzzle pieces, they're on the table. How about gold? You can put a circus tent over gold for the last couple of days. Look at that wild ride up and down in gold over, let's say, the last three days. Is this a short-term exhaustion move? It very well could be. The trend is still up. It's still on a breakout. But things don't go up forever. Nothing goes in a straight line forever. Markets ebb and flow. We know that. I'm sure the media was talking about gold over the last few days. I'm sure they were calling for a lot higher prices in gold right at the point in which gold made its reversal. It happens like that over and over and over again. Longer term, still bullish in gold. Crude oil still hit that slick, even with that news out of the Middle East with the Iranian National Guard apparently swiping a UK tanker ship. The story may have changed at the point in which I'm making this video, but nevertheless, you would think that oil would get a bigger lift with that kind of tension out there in the Middle East, and it didn't. What that tells me, it's headed in the other direction. It's headed for a destination. Where's the destination? 54 or below. How do I know that? We were looking at 54 when we couldn't break out above 54. Once we broke out above 54, we were talking about much, much higher, higher figures. Now what are we doing? Coming back to test the former breakout area, which was what? Right, 54. 
Anything new? Any revelation? No. It doesn't matter what the market is. Could be a commodity, a stock, the actual market itself, the S&P 500. All charts act and react the same way. And there, my friends, is the perfect place to pull the ripcord today. I'm David Frost, my strategic forecast. Thanks for tuning in for another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis.